Hi guys, welcome back to Belle's Books. I'm Carly and today I am bringing you my Springathon TBR and recommendations. So um, this is a readathon that's happening in May between the 7th, no, between the 4th and the 17th of May. Um, so it's a two week period where the readathon is happening. It is hosted by my lovely friend Emma over at Cup of Books and Natalie from A Curious Reader. I will link uh, both of their channels in the announcement video down below in the description box. So basically this readathon is to encourage you to read nature writing. Um, the only real challenge is to read one nonfiction book about nature writing um, and then they have some other prompts like categories to, to help you pick other books but it can be fiction as well. So I have a TBR bearing in mind my reading since lockdown has been pretty slow going um, and you know I'm not beating myself about, about it I'm just gonna just read what I can you know. So I don't imagine I will get through all of these books because there is no way that I can read them all in two weeks. But anyway, I thought it'd be nice to do this video so I can give these recommendations of books that I want to read because these are all books that are on my TBR anyway. And um, books that, or one of them I have read and I really love it and I want to recommend it. So let's get on with it. Um, so I've got the categories written down. They are bird, water, animal, plant and travel. And I have my stack of books here that I have picked for uh, books that I would like to read for these categories. Um, OK, so the first one is bird and I have picked H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. I've had this on my TBR for a while. This is a nonfiction book. Um, about Helen it's a kind of a memoir talking about um, a period of grieving that she was going through her father died and she was grieving and as a strange response to that she decided to train a goshawk so this is her memoir talking about that period where she was training this goshawk and I think it's about I've heard nothing but good things about it I think it won uh, the Samuel Johnson Prize for Nonfiction in 2014 um, I know it's well loved so it is about her dealing with grief and finding the connection um, through this bird to overcome her to her feelings uh, that's as far as I'm aware but I know that it is um, it's a well loved book so I've been wanting to get to this for a while so I thought I'll put this on okay so that's my only bird category the next category is water um, I have one dubious one, which is the one I want to read. Now, technically, I don't think this fits in, but I'm counting it anyway. I don't care. Um, I want to read Weather by Jenny Offal because it's on the Women's Prize shortlist. It's only small and it is about um, climate change. So it kind of has stuff to do with, uh, you know, nature i don't think there's much nature writing in it i don't know anyway i know it's a novel about um anxiety to do with climate change it's told in vignettes um and i think it's um might be fairly experimental in style so it's one that i'm really keen to get to um it is about oh what's the character's name lizzie um lizzie benson who's a librarian and she is taken on by her friend Sylvia um who oh hang on there's another water connection who has become famous for her podcast Hell and High Water so that's why I'm counting it um and Lizzie is taken on to kind of answer the mail she receives from the podcast um and she gets opposing views from like all the all the left-leaning people worried about climate change and the right-wingers um worried about the, the downfall of society or some such bollocks um so yeah I'm, I'm counting this as my water read because um i just really want to read it and it's kind of got um like a weather map thing on the front i know it's dubious but i'm gonna go with it anyway 
This book was uh, very kindly gifted to me by the lovely, lovely Jen Campbell because she had a spare copy and I nabbed it. So thank you very much, Jen, for that. Um, and also, look, she sent me this beautiful uh, postcard with a little fox on the front. Yay! Yay for book post. Now, this other book is my recommendation for the category of water. I have read it. It is To the River by Olivia Lang. I bloody love this book. It's one of my favourite books, honestly. And it is, um, it's a genre defying book because it's about a journey that Olivia took. So it's non-fiction. Um, it's about a journey that Olivia took down the river Ouse, which is um, the river that runs past my window I've turned my camera around today so you can kind of see a little bit outside it's I would have liked to have filmed outside but it's raining um, it's been raining for two days which I'm very pleased about because my allotment is getting watered um so I thought you could see but you can't really see it the tree outside my house um anyway so this is Olivia's journey down um the river ooze and it is kind of part it's beautiful beautiful nature writing in here um and it is also like literary biography because she talks a lot about Virginia Woolf um she goes past I think she goes past where Virginia Woolf used to live um and uh, it's a long time ago that I read it but I just remember it was stunning um and geography and there's a lot about plant she knows her plants a lot about um plants and the natural world and literature mythology there's there's all sorts going on in this book and it's just beautiful like I love Olivia Lang's writing it's just beautiful and she combines so much in here so beautifully I just think I want everyone to read it please read it um and it's perfect because it has a picture of water on it and it is to the river pick it for your water category um okay the other one I have for water is The Water Cure by Sophie McIntosh um, another one I haven't read, another one that's been on my TBR for a long time. Um, I think this is kind of riffing on a little bit of a little bit of folklore, but all I know about it is uh, it's three sisters. They're in you don't know if it's kind of the future, a bit of dystopian or or the present. They're in um a remote place with their mother and father who are trying to protect them. It's something to do with um, female bodies not being safe. And then this place is um, is invaded by some men. And that's all I know. Uh, so it's these girls are trying to be protected. Something to do with water. I don't know. Uh, I picked this up when I was in Cornwall. Um, at one of my favourite bookshops in St Ives. And I don't know if it's supposed to be set. I'm kind of... I'm hoping it's got Cornwall vibes because... Um, it's set in like a, is it, well, on an island somewhere. So yeah, lots to do with the sea, I hope. So yes, this one I might pick up if I've got time, but I probably won't. It'll probably just stay on my TBR for a while. Uh, the next is Animal. So I was going to go for Emma's recommendation for this one, um, The Bear and the Nightingale, which is a fiction by Catherine Arden. I think this is the first book in a trilogy um, set in uh, a rural community. So Emma said there's lots of lovely nature writing in it, even though it's kind of a bit fantasy, a bit, ma bit magic realism. I think it's set in the Russian, uh, Russia, yeah, northern Russian wilderness. Um, and again, this is one I really want to read it's fairly big it's like 450 odd pages um but it's all to do with folklore and um like the old ways and i just i really want to read this so um i might have this as my one of my fiction options for this readers on alternatively um for animal i know there's been quite a few um recommendations to do with bees for this readathon and um i'm not going to go for those ones that have been mentioned like the bees already i'm going to go for a poetry collection the bees by caroline duffy because poetry collections are easy and quick to read and this one is just beautiful and look at that cover it's stunning i love caroline duffy she's one of my favorite poets and this collection all about bees is just beautiful and it's just it's perfect to read right now so very comforting and lovely. I would highly recommend it. 
Okay, next we have the category of plant. Now, uh, for this, I um, am going to read in the Life in the Garden by Penelope Live. Penelope Lively? Yeah, I think I said that right. Um, again, another one that has been on my TBR for a while. I picked it up ages ago. Um, this is about Penelope's own reflections on um, her interactions with gardens and gardening and that the connection between gardening and writing. So at the beginning, she says, because um, I just read like the first couple of pages, she said, this is a book in which fictional gardens act as prompts for a consideration of what gardens and gardening have been for us over time. And I really love that, um, that idea. So she's got, um, and it's got like really pretty um, pictures in it. So the categories she's got are reality and metaphor, the written garden, the fashionable garden, time order and the garden, style and the garden and town and country. Um, so I think it's like, Oh, hello, Katie's just come in. Hello, Katie. <laughs> She's got a lot to say. Um, so I think it's, yeah, Penelope's kind of reflections on the importance of gardening. And that I know this because I, I'm a keen gardener. I have an allotment and my garden. And I always feel so much better when I've been gardening and had my hands in the earth. And you can... I, like recently I've been sowing a lot of seeds for my allotment so I'm out in my greenhouse every day checking on my seedlings and I just find it so calming it's such a lovely thing to do it really grounds you and just makes you feel a whole lot better so um, I think this book is going to be discussing those kind of things yay yay for gardening okay <gasps> whoops Katie you are lucky that that did not fall on your head right i'd move if i were you katie <laughs> let's hope those books don't fall down again oh did you see by the way i've got my um my leaf earrings in today on brand for the springathon right the next category uh is travel slash destination um and for this i am going to read the outrun by amy liptrot this is a non-fiction a memoir um about Amy who goes to, um, where is it, Orkney. She goes home to Orkney. She's suffering from um, addiction. So she's recovering from addiction and it's about, again, the way that she connects with nature, the way that she connects with the place that she's from, because she's from Orkney. Um, so she swims in the sea and she traces the wildlife and she looks at the stars at night. And it's her overcoming her condition her addiction um by being connected to nature and landscape and place and it just sounds lovely um and this was the winner of the wainwright prize as well um so if i think it might be my choice next for my book club if it is i might pick this um then i can kill two birds with one stone uh so yes uh this i've had nothing but good things about this so i've been really keen to get to this for a while um, okay, the other choice I have, again, this is a, a bit of a dodgy one, um, but I'm going to go for it. <sighs> the Bass Rock by Evie Wild, just because I've heard so many good things about it. Simon um, from Savage Reads has been going on about it and I just, I really want to read it. Um, and I'm shoehorning it in by the fact that it's got a plant on the cover, so it could... Um, it could come under the plant category and also it's about a bass the bass rock which is an island a tiny island um from in scotland um and i think that that's the setting of this book i don't know how much nature writing there is probably not a lot because it's to, mostly to do with the, the male violence against women through three generations but i'm just so keen to get to this because it's um there's a little bit of kind of witchcraft and stuff in there so it sounds amazing. It's about them um, set over three different time periods, three different women and their experiences basically with to toxic masculinity and the and the men that um, enact violence upon them and the way that they come to deal with that through sisterhood and um, yeah, and just solidarity. So I'm, I'm I just I really want to read this. So I wanted to shoehorn it into this readathon somehow. So that is 
potentially my pick for travel destination because it's a place it's set around the bass rock that that works i think okay um i have a few other recommendations for you i also have um a poet's guide to britain which is edited by owen shears this is a collection of poetry um and this one might be a good one to pick up it has the poems are broken down into categories as well so we have got let me show you categories like islands um mountains and oh, what's the other one woods and forest coasts and sea so you could pick this up and uh, read a few that's what i'm going to do just dip into this and read a few poems um for various categories so that i'm um reading kind of different things for each of the categories and i thought this would be a nice thing to pick up more poetry as well so that is one recommendation um the next one is at the source by gillian clark gillian clark is a poet and um i think a lot of her poetry is grounded in nature as well this is more like a kind of a memoir but it's more like um the journal of a year because she is based in wales i think and yeah in wales uh, and it's her like her writing year connected to the landscape connected to the place that she lives in again and how the land informs her work informs her poetry and um just generally her uh, and her life in general and this just sounds beautiful and um again another one i've been wanting to get through in a while and it's not massive you know it's only like 160 pages so yeah so it's about her relationship to place and language and how they inform one another which i thought is a really lovely um really lovely thing to pick up another fiction choice um another dubious one but again i'm sticking it in because it's got a bird on the cover it's got plants on the cover it's another one to do with folklore and landscape albeit um a magical landscape so this is set in the remote island of neverness which is obviously not a real place but um it sounds very much like there is a lot of kind of nature and um landscape writing in here even though it is a made-up landscape i think it still counts <laughs> um so it's about this village and the people that live there and the way that they are connected to nature um and it's very fantastical so it says uh there's a character that is born with a wing for an arm just sounds beautiful it sounds like there's um some really rich language in here and it's all kind of riffing on folk law and fairy tale kind of stuff so and just look at that cover it's a beauty so again i might dip into this because i think it's it's an act it's a novel or short story i think it might be a novel but it has maps look oh oh that's pretty i do love a map in a book okay and the last one i wanted to mention because this video is crazy long is um a non-fiction the forager's calendar uh by john wright which is a book i got for my birthday recently um from my lovely friend holly and this is basically just um the calendar of the year told in um plants that you and um things that you can forage to eat i'm all about foraging um at the moment i can't identify anything but that's why i've got this so what i plan to do is take this out with me because when i go um and obviously we're not allowed out only for one walk a day but my allotment is literally just around the corner there so when i go to my allotment i walk um through a nature reserve which i know i'm very fortunate and that's lovely but there's lots of plants growing on on the walk to the allotment it's only like five minutes away and I don't know what, apart from nettles, I don't know what most of them are. So I'm going to take my forager's book and see what I can eat from these things growing in the hedgerows. Um, so yeah, it's got, it's lovely. It's just got like um, pictures of the various plants and it tells you all about them, a little bit about their history, when people used to eat them and what you can do with them. Amazing. Um, so yeah, that is my my last suggestion for this readathon. Um let me know um, down in the comments below if you're going to be reading any of these books or what you're going to be reading for Springathon. Um, it sounds like an excellent readathon. Thank you very much to Emma for putting it on. Um, 
and I will let you know how I get on uh, with my wrap up at the end of it. All right, speak to you later, guys. Bye.